As far as remote locks go in Scotland, Loch Enoch has to be up there with the very best. Located here in the heart of the Galloway Hills, it's hard to imagine a world beyond that rugged skyline and that's what makes this place so very special. So in this adventure, I'm out with Coops the dog and we're going to be wild camping in this stunning mountain environment. True Scottish wilderness. My main objective in this trip is just to embrace the landscape, to focus on the finer details rather than letting them pass me by as I race up towards the summit. The plan for today is to make my way slowly to the beautiful sandy shores of Loch Enoch, where I'll be pitching the Hex Peak and enjoying a beautiful wee wild camp. I'm also putting my new boots to the test, so I traded in the Bhutans due to a broken lug and I ended up with the Salomon Quest 4Ds, so I'm excited to see how they'll cope this rugged and wild landscape but for now I'm gonna lug this 18 kilogram rucksack packed with camera gear video gear camping gear and wheeze my way up through this glen to my destination <laughs> oh it's tough going man The last time I was here, I almost broke my ankle three or four times. It was really bad to the point where I could not walk. But thankfully, in amongst all the wreckage of this mass deforestation, there is now a well-engineered path. I can't believe it. I thought I was going to be bog trotting. Now, don't be fooled into thinking that this is not a wild place. I am currently 5.8 kilometers away from the car. It's a constant ascent, and the further I go up this path, the further away I am from civilization, and that's just the way I like it. It would appear that that is the end of the track. We're heading up in here. Scottish wilderness come to Galloway though if you don't like sinking up to your knees in a bog going uphill I would give it a miss just in case you didn't believe me there's my knee Ugh. Ugh. Jesus What an absolutely stunning night. There is not a breath of wind. The waters of the loch are like a mirror. Every so often you'll hear a little bloop and that's trout breaking water surface. And we've got a pair of geese as well. It's just so lovely to be out here in the magnificent Scottish wilderness.
So that's the Rigger Lochinach. This is the Merrick. That's the Spear of the Merrick, Kiri Riuch. And that's Shalak and Minnoch in the background, Turf Essex in behind that. If you pan around, you'll see, oh, Mawaka has got a lovely golden hue to it. Behind Mawaka, you've got the Rins of Kells, Craig Nearney, Craig Naw, and then down behind Craig Nearney is the Dungeon Hill. What have we got on the menu tonight? Hmm? Normal kibble, carrot, and the piece de resistance, can of tuna. That smell good. <laughs> you excited? So for my dinner I've got the old classic pot in the dough, mix in some garlic potatoes. I've also got some veggie sausages to mix through it as well. Been down to the lock and collected two litres of water. It's lovely and fresh. There's nothing in it, no sediment, but I'm going to filter it anyway with this. I'll pour some into here for cooking and the rest is drinking water for me and Coops. I have also brought a beer. So this is a first for me while camping. This is a Stuart Brown one. I got it from Aldi. I've had it before. It's absolutely lovely. So it's the Island Getaway. I'll talk about that when I'm drinking it. Now I don't drink in general, um, I don't sit and have a beer at the house, I don't get pished, <laughs> but recently, maybe because I'm getting a bit older, uh, I discovered that there are a few beers that I really, really love. It's the, the flavour and the sensation of the tongue, and it's usually these sort of mango hop beers, Northern Monk do really good ones as well. Um, really really enjoy them and this has been sitting i've been looking for an excuse to drink it and i can't really think of a better excuse than this sitting in the scottish wilderness all alone with my tent with my dog coops the moon is out behind me the geese are going daft and the trout are still popping up what an experience it's just absolutely lovely <laughs> what I love about wee moments like that is the fact that that will happen regardless of whether we are here to witness it or not and it's such a privilege to be able to just sit here and see that right I'm going to sit and enjoy this then I'm going to hit the hay because it's currently 5 to 10 and sunrise is at 10 past 5 in the morning and hopefully tomorrow I'll wake up a bit more energised because that walk in really took it out of me just because I haven't been out in so long. 18 kilograms and uh, 10 kilometres to this very spot of just pure ascent. It's just, it's not that high but it's constant and with that pack in your bag, jeez oh man. There's just, there was just a moment where I felt myself go and that was that, no more energy. And then when I was trying to find a camping spot around the loch, I was going to film it all, but I just could not muster the energy to do it. So, aye. Anyway, slange. Just given how calm it is outside, I wasn't going to bother with any guy lines in the hex peak. But I've just checked the forecast and in the morning, the wind is to be a bit stronger. So 20 kilometres an hour or something like that. Um, enough to give it a wee shake. So I thought, bugger it, I'll just stick them on. Peace of mind, just in case I don't wake up in time. 
and die. So I'll see you then. Good night. Well, good morning, troops. The weather's taking a bit of a turn. <laughs> I've decided to strike camp just now while the weather's dry given that the forecast was uh, a bit early so I don't really want to get caught in any rain quickly before the rain starts, this is where I was camped, leave no trace has been applied. So far I'm really impressed with these Salomon boots, I have put them through hell on this trip, especially in the land around the loch, it's been a boggy nightmare for them, and yet my feet are still dry. So as I navigate through the crags at the foot of the Merrick, I'm on a hunt for a superb example of Paradola. Now if you don't know what Paradola is, it's when you see faces and things, inanimate objects. And wait till you see this one. Wow. There he is. There's his eyes, his nose, his mouth and his goatee. Amazing. I've always been fascinated by sights like this, they're very, very mysterious. Now I wonder what would happen if I were to touch the stone. 